Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I'm going to spend some time looking at more nullable issues that have showed up with rocks. Um, this is with the latest bits, uh, .NET Core 3.0 Preview 7, uh, latest 2019 preview, I think. Point is, things got updated earlier this week. As expected, things broke, so I wasn't too surprised. But um, one set of changes was fairly easy. The other set of changes were not so easy. So the, the set of changes that were fairly easy had to do with things like... Do I have them up here? No, because I was looking at something. Um... I oh, can't, can't think of where it is right now. I mean, I could look up exclamation point because I was putting damn it everywhere. The the APIs for .NET libraries, you know, core ones, um, they're, they're, they're getting updated with nullable annotations and whatnot. And that's finally showing up in... Visual Studio as well, so you can actually see if you're hovering over a method, it will say method info with a question mark saying this could possibly be null. Um, the, the, the thing is, is that while it's fairly easy to fix, you just put an exclamation point there or a bang there. Um, it, it's not wrong. It's just there are cases where I go, I know this could never be null. I'm absolutely positive of it. So treat it as not null. Um, and so you just put the exclamation point there. It's just one character. You know, it, it just, it feels a little weird now. I think over time, as I get used to it, it just won't make a big deal. Um, I know I could put nullable disable on the file, but that feels wrong. I don't want to do it within the whole file. So I think it's just one of those things you have to get used to is say, in cases where you absolutely know this could be not null, then put the bang there. So, uh, so those I fixed. The other ones have to do with Oh, where are they? Excuse me. I've had a uh, long couple of last couple of days. I've been in uh, Wisconsin Dells. I spoke at that conference and um, really didn't spend much time at the conference at all. My family, we went to Devil's Lake. We did some other things. And I just, well, I, I got up both mornings to do that 5K um, I didn't run, I just walked, but um, I got up and at least got the, the the body moving for three miles every morning. So, some something to do. And I didn't really sleep the greatest in the hotel room, so uh, that happened. And then, you know, to be honest, my younger son had a, a minor procedure, very easy to, to handle. Um, it was all planned, and it was uh, fairly simple. The problem is, is that my older, I'm sorry, my younger son has uh, some some issues. He gets really freaked out with doctors and needles and stuff. I mean, to the point where he's just like adamant and yelling and screaming that he does not want any, you know, that. So that was a real challenge. Uh, we He couldn't eat the night before and he couldn't drink like two hours before. And we were actually concerned he'd be up um, trying to sabotage it, um, and you know it's uh, it was tough. So my wife and I had to kind of make sure we both stayed up at night. He slept the whole night, but we had to make sure he didn't try to get somewhere and sneak in some food. Um, fortunately, we had kind of anticipated this. So they, even though he was going to get a anesthesia with a mask, um, not an IV, even that was just the whole thing was just freaking him out. So after much struggling and literally holding him down, we gave him a, a sedative, a liquid sedative. And within 15 minutes, um, his personality <laughs> changed quite substantially. And my, my wife fortunately recorded it because it's quite funny. Um, I'm actually thinking of stealing the video and posting it because uh, it, it is kind of funny. Um you know, later he apologized and he said he was sorry. Um, 
and and it's part of his diagnosis. You know, he's high functioning autistic. So is my older son, and they um, it's expressed in different ways. It's definitely something that you don't notice, um, but that's something that is a part of their lives, and um, yeah, it, it gives me a little bit more sympathy, <laughs> a little bit, um, a lot more sympathy when. I see parents struggling with kids and other parents, you know, dismissing kids. Oh, they're just throwing a tantrum. Why can't they just stop? And it's like, I wish I could just make him stop. And um, it's not as easy as that. So, you know, for, for parents that have kids that are in somewhere on the spectrum, you know, even, even if they're, like I say, considered high functioning, they can have moments. <laughs> and... Um, they, they, in different ways and they can be hard to, to get through. So, um, but hopefully this will be one of those teachable moments with him again. Um, and he'll just learn to, I guess, like I said, it's okay to be scared. It's not okay to act this way in public. And, um, even, you know, even with a diagnosis, we've told them that's not an excuse in life. That doesn't mean that you get to act any way you want. That doesn't mean that you get to do whatever you want. You, you have to rise above that and, and, and not to say ignore it, just acknowledge it, but understand that, um, that you, that's, that's not a hindrance to your life. So, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure tomorrow that he understands we already have a, yeah, a consequence in place. <laughs> we'll tell him what he needs to do. Um, so, a little bit of personal information there, but hey, you gotta you gotta be uh, honest in life. I think it's actually important to, to to talk about those things, and you know, it's not just the the techie part. Um, and you know that there's just things in life happen. So I'm I'm kind of the point is I'm kind of tired right now. I didn't get a lot of sleep the last few nights. Thankfully, nobody has to go anywhere tomorrow morning. So. I'm probably not even going to set the alarm. I'm just going to sleep in. So, getting back to tech. Um, I can kind of figure this out, giving I'm, I'm tired. I am, and he knows I'm drinking beer, too. Um, so, these are the errors. There's actually now a new generic constraint that you can put on in C-sharp code, and it's called not null. So, you can actually annotate or, or have a constraint to say a uh, generic param type parameter cannot be a, a, a nullable. It has to be a non-null. Not null. So details, there's there's articles out there now actually that were released from Microsoft that talk about these things. I'm not so much interested in getting into that as I just want to solve the damn problem. Um, so let's actually go into my tests here and see. Do I have constraint tests? I don't know if I'm actually that specific. I have... You know, there's a get constraints on not exceptions, extensions, type exceptions. Do I have a constraints test? I don't know. I don't know if I'm actually that specific. Um, I, I could I could do it um, because well, let's see. Is that called from anything? I do have generic arguments tests. Um. Oh, that's in benchmarking. I don't really care about that. <laughs> well, I do, just not now. I, I thought that was actually a... I don't have tests around this. I'm a bad boy. Well, wait, who calls... I, this is called get generic arguments. So I actually have tests around this. I do. Um, what are the tests? Okay. That's kind of skimpy. That's actually not what I was hoping for. Um, I, I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to get more than this. I was hoping to have something like get constraints. So maybe I should actually start doing that. I mean, I do it here because I'm saying on the target, on the method, get the generic arguments and get the arguments and get the constraints. Um, but that's also just on a type, 
because each type of the generic in the method um, can have them. So the same thing with, with a, uh, so, so what that one does, it goes through each generic argument and looks at the, yeah, go, call, get calls, get, get, get constraints. So how do I want to do this? Do I want to have in type, type extensions, a get constraints? Oh, well, my, well, let's, tr let's try that. Let's just say add a class called type extensions get constraints. Okay. And then we're going to say um, No, not pubic. <laughs> um, this is also, I don't know if I've said this before, this is why live coding can be dangerous because there's certain words that, like public, if you miss something, can be comical. Um, there are other variable names and stuff that if you don't type them incorrectly, they can be really disastrous. So, um, as that was disastrous, but you can see you can, inadvertently type something in you really don't mean. Um, okay, so test public static void <laughs> or class constraint. So here I'm on a public class class with class constraint of t, where t is of type class. Boom. Okay, so now here, if I say var target is equal to type of cw and then I say var constraints equal to target, get constraints. No, no, that. Let's see if it's smart enough. I should be able to see it because it's internal, right? Internal static string, yeah. So I should be able to, to do this. Why can't I? Oh, I got to pass in a Yeah, yep, yep. Okay. New. I wish that had an that would be so maybe it maybe it does. That would be cool just to say new and instead of it being just, you know, sorted set there to, to actually give you the option of saying sorted set of string. It knows you don't have the using, but just put the using in there. That would actually be kind of a cool thing, because then it does. Then I don't have to do what I'm doing right now, and that that would actually be much cooler. Okay. Okay. So then we're going to say assert are equal, or no, that constraints. And that's just a string, right? That's just like a is equal to where t class. I think that's what it should come up with. I'm not sure though. Let's see. Building, building, building. Oh, by the way, speaking of my family, um, and again, my, my kids are, are awesome. I love them dearly. And, um, you know, there's, they are who they are and wouldn't have it any other way. We watched Inglorious Bastards tonight. <laughs> and, um, they actually enjoyed it. What was interesting is my younger son actually followed the, the dialogue a little bit more closely. My older son, who's actually a World, World War I and II buff, um, he, a couple times the, the dialogue just didn't really interest him as much. He, he thinks of a war movie as just war, you know, guns, battles, tanks, and, and it's like, well, no, you, you know, there's more subtly that. I actually have to show him the trailer to 
1917. I don't think he's seen it yet. Um, so, um, 15 with zero stream <laughs> didn't come back with anything. Well, ain't that cute? Um, so maybe this isn't as well. It's got to, right? I mean, if I if I do a class, it's good. These are on the t wait. T rest can be used a type parameter. T rest and generic type of method. No every type argument does not match all no constraint. It's, it's got to be this. So what? Oh, I'm saying for the constraints. Okay, hold on. I, I I didn't do that quite right. I actually here I have to say um, generic get generic <laughs> parameter constraints. That's uh, get generic arguments. All right. Okay. So that's the target. Now what? And now you pass. Yep, okay, so that actually works. I just was, I was not stinking thinking. Get constraints for struct constraint. And we want a public, yeah. Gotta follow my, my conventions here. Create a class with struct Constraint where T is struct. Um, so that's the one we're going to put here. And we'll say that. And now this should say struct. And we will also do a case where there are no constraints. And we should see string empty. Good. Get constraints for no constraint. Do our copy and paste with no constraints. And this should be string empty. And it is. Okay, so now I think if I come back here, struct class. Oh, and I also do the. Uh, Parameter less constructor for now um, for a constructor constraint. So we'll come out here, and we'll do that, and we'll do this constructor constraint where T is new and grab that. And we'll say new. Nope, not that. That. And this should pass. And it does. Okay, cool. So now what we need is a not null constraint. So class with not null. And as you can see there, there's like a bunch of them. Oh. See, it doesn't, it, God, it should be contextual there. It should say, ah, I'm actually putting in a constraint, so I'm only going to show you the keywords that could be a constraint. You know, I, I, I don't understand why IntelliSense can't be better than that. Um, okay, so we're going to come in here, and we should say, not null, not null, and what I want it to do is do where t is not null. But this should fail because I'm actually not doing this just yet. Mm -hmm. Probably a string dot empty right now is my guess. Yep, okay, so now, now we're good. We have tests and we have tests that will fail. So you need to come over here. And this is where I'm kind of guessing. I was told that somewhere on the type there should be attributes on it to say um, I have the documentation over here. 
And it should, if you have the not null constraint, you should have a single byte. And it should be one. Type parameter definition. So we're going to just kind of play with this and see if we can find out. I'll come over here. What are you doing? Not that. <clears throat> no, 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 stop. <laughs> that, that. Okay. So we're going to do mind debug. Yes, I am good. Okay. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Story of my life. Actually, when I did my presentation this week on what's new in C Sharp 8, my mind completely blanked on doing something with a switch statement, the kind of the pattern matching stuff that's in C Sharp 8. And I just completely blanked and I said, Nope, nope, not going to try to debug this right now. I'm doing something wrong. And I got too much, you know, I got a lot to cover, so we're just going to move on. Somebody in the audience said, well, I think you just missed a parameter. I'm like, no, 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 thank you, but nope, I'm going to just move on. And um, it felt a little embarrassing just to have a mind blank there, but <clears throat> at the same time, as a speaker, I've learned, and I've even seen, um, I've even seen, like, people like Mads, who, who are... Mads Torgensen, I think is how you say his last name. He's like the C sharp person right now. And even he's done talks in C sharp where because of the bits that he has, or he just fly off he's like he forgets something or it just doesn't work right. And he screws it up, which is you think that's how could somebody like that fail like that? And it's like, well, people are people, you know, and it's it's not like he just sits there all day coding in C sharp, you know. Um so my my point is it's like, ah, yeah, we all make mistakes. All can make mistakes. And the best thing is that they recorded that presentation. So I'm going to look back and go, oh, that's how I screwed up. So back to this. Is it a generic parameter? Yes. Um, so it has a custom attribute on it. And, oh, look at that. It's right there. It's right there. So if I said this dot is nullable. Oh, no, no, no. Has nullable. No, I don't think I can do that in here. I think, say this. How did I say that? That's, oh God, I got, that's right. I got to do this. You know, maybe, maybe what I should do I'm trying to think if because I need to do the same thing again, and I don't want to repeat this. Um, so, and that's with the nullable context. This is not a parameter info. It's a. Uh, and I don't have to do this stuff because it says here it's going to be a single byte on it. I really hope so. Oh God, I'm reading. First nullable attribute attributes are generated at each type reference and type parameter definition by... Oh, God. So it's possible. It's possible that apparently you could have a nullable context that you have to look at. Ah, You just never stop, do you? You just never, ever stop. And this is doing what? Oh, that's just on the pre. Yeah. Okay. You would do this, wouldn't you? What I'm wondering is if I could do. Does this make sense? Could I have a nullable context option that passes in a type, but it only works if you have um, if you have a if you're passing in a parameter type or a type that is a generic parameter. Okay. Otherwise it throws. And it says, no, you can't do that because it just doesn't make sense. Um, types don't have those. So I think. But that would then localize this to the same thing, I think. Um, which I could kind of break this up so that I could get 
like get nullable flags for parameter info, get nullable flags for a type, and then have these that are just taking custom attribute data, get custom attribute data um, that I can say, here's all the customer attribute data, give me back the, the flags. Um, which in this case, Ah, yeah. So let's, uh, I think that's the right way to do it. Um, I think. So let's try that. Let's say type. type. So if types no. If Type, if not type, is generic parameter, then throw new not supported exception only generic parameter types are accepted. Which I should never do. I mean, I'm so. This now, um, I need to have a private static byte get nullable flags for a type type. Okay. And now this I'm going to pull out into a private static get nullable context values. So now I can say nullable context here. Okay. And then I can also say, I could also say <laughs> private static byte get nullable flags for AI cuss. What is this? My list of I list of custom attribute data. I list of custom attribute data attributes. And so then you kind of take all this, you put it up here, plop it there, take this and say attributes. except that doesn't quite work because here the member is the method and the declaring type is the declaring type. Um, if it is actually a, um, <laughs> here's another case. What happens if it's a generic parameter on a method? Um, then I need the member and I need, um, cause it could be a generic parameter on, um, method. So then you have to get the type, but what happens if it's just a type, if the, if that's declaring member is a type, it, if you know what I mean? Um, it's value. And what happens if you have nested types. I don't even know if I'm handling that right. Once again, an episode is going to take more than one. So I'm going to stop here. And once again, we're going to dive down a rabbit hole and see if I can come up with a solution that's somewhat elegant on this. So that's all the time I have for right now. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.